Welcome, everyone. Uh, my name's Nicole Smith. I'm a third year MD PhD student here at Weill Cornell. Um, and on a day when I think everyone has global health and Weill Cornell's role, uh, and Cornell University at large's role in global health on their minds, um, we're very honored to have President Scorton here, uh, someone who has made a very public commitment to global health. Um, he's here for this month's Grand Rounds Lecture. Um, the Global Health Grand, Grand Rounds Lecture Series is part of Weill Cornell's brand new global health curriculum for medical students. Um, this is a student and faculty led initiative that started last fall. Um, and you can see our websites on um, the papers that are available at the door uh, for more information. Um, the sponsors of the Global Health Grand Rounds lecture series include the Medical Student Executive Committee, the Global Emergency Medicine Program at New York Presbyterian, the Office of Global Health Education, the Center for Global Health, and the Events Management Office. Um, so we'd like to thank all of those organizations for helping out. On behalf of all of the students and faculty involved, um, we'd like to thank you all for coming. We'd especially like to thank Dr. Flomenbaum, Chair of Emergency Medicine, um, for graciously sponsoring and hosting the career seminar that's open to students and um, residents that will be held immediately following this lecture. We'd also like to thank um, Dr. Finkel, the Director of the Office for Global Health Education, and Dr. Johnson, Director of the Center for Global Health, um, for serving as our faculty host for this talk. Um, so now I'd just like to invite Dr. Johnson to come present Dr. Scorton, President Scorton. <laughs> Thank you, Nikki. Those rumblings are ominous. Dr. Scorton asked me if I'd just make uh, a few comments about Haiti, which is so much in the news, and I think many of you know that we have had a program, have a program in Haiti that dates back 30 years. Uh, I'm very pleased to note that as of an hour ago, we know that our faculty and our students in Haiti in Port-au-Prince working right, our centers right where the, the middle of the earthquake area, are all safe. Uh, the facilities are severely damaged. We don't know the extent of the damage since we haven't been able to access the area because the roads are, are totally obstructed. Uh, many of our, our Haitian employees, and there are over 300 working there, are homeless at this point in time. Uh, this is really the, the first hit, uh, if you will, the first tsunami, this earthquake, because uh, within the next week, with, uh, without food, without water, without electricity, without communications, uh, the injured people won't get care. Uh, other diseases, we're going to see diarrhea and all of the, the things that are associated with catastrophes like this. So uh, we've, on the Global Health website, we're endeavoring to provide updates uh, on the acute situation there, and uh, including an email I got from Dr. Pop about an hour and a half ago. But the website's wildcornelledu.globalhealth, and there are a lot of things there, but there are, are updates. Uh, from what I've heard directly from the people in Haiti, the news is not exaggerating it. Uh, walking down several blocks of a road, uh, it was reported that there were over 100 bodies uh, at the roadside as people are brought out from the rubble. So it, it's real and they're going to need lots of help. It's hard to transition from that grim story to the, uh, the fun part of being up here, and that is to introduce somebody who's, who's a colleague, has become a friend, and is our 12th president of Cornell University. Uh, Dr. Scorton comes to us out of the Midwest, Northwestern, then UCLA, and most recently uh, the University of Iowa, where he was, uh, and still is, uh, an eminent cardiologist, was president of the University of Iowa, and then was recruited to Cornell, and it's been our great pleasure to have him as our president for the last three and a half years. So we look forward to your words, Dr. Scorton.
Thanks, Warren. Much more important than what I'm going to talk about, uh, really, I, I appreciate the fact that you updated us on our, on our colleagues in, um, in, in Haiti. Um, permit me uh, uh, just to say a word about Warren Johnson um, and the work that's going on at Weill Cornell Medical College. Uh, 30 years this year, uh, as I'll talk about in a moment, uh, uh, you, uh, Warren, and your colleagues have been um, uh, in Haiti uh, doing this very important work long before it was a cause celeb to be doing this kind of thing. And uh, we're very, very uh, fortunate to, um, to have your leadership. And I want to thank you publicly for everything that you do. <laughs> so I'm, I'm really gratified to see such a good turnout. And it is, it is true, uh, as you mentioned, that um, uh, global health uh, has been in everybody's mind the last 24 hours, or maybe to be more specific, What's been on many of our minds is how uh, people bearing burdens in the world continue to have more burdens placed on them in the most um, unimaginable way. And uh, the, uh, the casualties and the disruption uh, in a country that can uh, ill afford uh, even the status quo uh, is breathtaking and reminds us uh, again um, how fortunate we are uh, in our lives, um, how easy our lives are, and uh, how important it is that we try to make a difference in areas where that's not true. And so I um, salute the students and faculty who have made this, um, this effort possible. I also want to congratulate you on the first, uh, um, first volume of this uh, wonderful newsletter and um, congratulate uh, you on opening the center uh, uh, on, um, what is it, on 69th, uh, just, just off of York uh, on, on the south side of the street. So. I haven't had a chance to get in there yet, but I've seen the awning, and it looks very impressive. And uh, the best is there's no picture of Warren on the door, which, which would be sort of un unseemly. So I think that's great. <clears throat> so today I'm going to talk a little bit about um, uh, what you have done and what you can do. And the basic thesis of my discussion is that uh, we are uh, a privileged profession, uh, living in a privileged uh, country and a privileged part of a privileged country and that there are uh, good reasons why we should exert efforts along the lines that you have developed uh, in the Global Health Program. I'm going to take you on a bit of a travelogue around Cornell University, uh, both in Ithaca and here, and things that cross between the two. I'm going to remind you of some of the good work that you and your colleagues uh, uh, in Ithaca are doing and are planning, and, um, and end with, um, with some words about the future. So. Uh, 